Yo, 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 welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back to Dolphins United, the platform for Dolphins. You heard me. It's been a minute. Been gone for a while. A lot of things happened. All right. A lot of things happened. A lot of personal things. Um, I'll let you in on a little bit of it. Uh, my mom was involved in a real big, really bad accident last Thursday. Not this Thursday that just passed, but the Thursday before that. Kind of turned everything upside down. She's okay. Uh, she's home now. She's resting. All right. Um, so that's why I've been gone. Partly I was planning on putting a video on Friday, last Friday, but obviously, yeah. So <laughs> that's why I'm here so far um, uh, away from the last video or so far removed from the last videos because a lot of personal things happened. But once again, my mom is finally home. Uh, she got home yesterday. Uh, it was it was a pretty bad accident. Pretty bad accident. Uh, it was a two collision accident. So, you know, broken bones, things like that. But all those things are healed. I'm just happy that she's alive. I thank God that she's alive. All right. But and we'll, we'll, we'll let that to the side. I want to bring y'all a special video. Obviously, ain't a lot of content going on right now. So you got to try and find things. All right. So I've been scouring, looking for things. I found an article on Sun Sentinel by my guy Omar Kelly that I just want to go ahead and go over with you guys and react to. All right, so I'm just going to react to this video for y'all and give you his top 10 guys that he wants to see in training camp, okay? So it's pretty much what he wants to see in training camp, these 10 guys, these newcomers, okay? So the top 10 newcomers going into training camp, and we're going to go from 10 all the way up to 1. That's how we're going to do it. I appreciate uh, Doug, TD, they holding it down for us right now. K Flexing uh, just moved, so he, he's finally back in the game. In a couple weeks, it's about to be hot fire all over Twitter, all over again. So all of us going to get together. Well, not get together on the same video, but like get together and, and give y'all that hot fire. Just got to wait like 10 more days, pretty much. All right, 10 more days or so, somewhere around there, we start getting some real good news about what's going on in training camp, all right? That's real close. That's Christmas for all of us. It's real close by. So just bear with us for a few weeks while we try to come up with creative content to give y'all, all right? Because that's what y'all here for. So anyway, enough of the talking. Let's get into the top 10 newcomers going into training camp, according to Omar Kelly. This is not my article. This is Omar Kelly of the Sun Sentinels article. The column is for Sun Sentinel. So I, I don't want nobody saying, oh, I'm acting like I wrote it or, or anything like that. I, I can't write that good. All right, so well, let's go. <laughs> I'm joking, but I'm not joking. All right, so let's go ahead. Number 10 is punter Michael Pilardi, okay? Michael Pilardi is number 10. Pilardi, a former St. Thomas Aquinas uh, high school standout who missed 2020 because of a knee injury, has played 55 games of NFL career with the, Pan with the Carolina Panthers, totaling 243 punts for 11,000 yards, blah, 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 netting 40% on his punt average, all right? We signed him to replace Matt Hawk. He wants to see how he's going to do, okay? He wants to see how he's going to do as a newcomer. All right, now why I didn't have my own list because I don't know a lot of these new guys. I know all the new guys coming in, but I don't really know the new guys coming in. Um, and I wanted to see if his list looks something like how my list would look, okay? So, number nine, this is pretty low. This is pretty low on the list. He has Jacoby Brissett, all right? Now, we all know who Jacoby Brissett is pretty much, all right? Uh, he was the backup quarterback for, well, he, yeah, he was drafted originally by the Patriots. Then... He moved over to the Colts, was the backup quarterback, became the actual quarterback when Andrew Luck stepped back, um, had a decent season, wasn't great. Then they went and got, uh, who was it? Why am I drawing a blank? Phillip Rivers, that's right. They went and got Phillip Rivers uh, to start ahead of him because Jacoby Brissett was just eh. So Phillip Rivers, all right, took him to the playoffs. They, didn't, they got bounced out in the playoffs. He retires. Jacoby Brissett's a free agent. We sign him. Best free agent quarterback to me. Uh, he was number one on my list. He was number 
Yeah, he was number one on my list, but I didn't think we were going to get him. So my true number one was Alex Smith, but we didn't end up getting Alex Smith because he retired as well, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah, Jacoby Brissett, we ended up getting him. He was the best option out there as a backup quarterback to Tua. So he's pretty, he's pretty low at number nine, but, hey, that's where he is on the list, and we're going to keep it moving, all right? We're going to keep it moving. I am interested to see how he's doing when it comes to training camp opposed to how Tua's doing. To compare them, that is going to be great because he is a consummate pro. He's been around for a while, so he's going to be able to show Tua things and also like that t fire on the Tua because he should be out there throwing – Nice passes himself because he's not, it's not like he's an old quarterback or anything like that. He's pretty young. He should be out there slinging the ball around. So let's see what he has. Number eight is Adam Butler. This is a guy that we signed from the Patriots. Two-year deal, $9 million. All right, so he's one of those guys that hopefully be able to clog up the lane on the run. In the run. Apparently, he's got a little bit of pre pressure. All right, he's produced 17 sacks, 23 tackles for loss. 26 QB hits in four seasons, okay? He averages around about 451 snaps as well. So he's a guy that we're going to be able to roll in, you know. We like to keep the defensive line moving. Hopefully he can help plug up the run. That's what we really need him for. But he's a guy that can get to the quarterback, all right? He's also a guy that can pressure, okay? So getting to the quarterback, that's one thing. But being able to push the pocket and pressure just a quick – Quicken up the timing for the wide receiver and the quarterback, that's good too because that can lead to interceptions, all right, or having to hold on to the ball to take a sack. So either way, that can help us, all right, because if the, if the quarterback's getting pressure in his face, he's got to hold the ball to maneuver and maybe somebody else gets a sack, all right, and that's what I mean by saying that, pushing up the middle, all right, forcing the quarterback left or right, and then one of our defensive ends come to clean that up, all right. So hopefully we can get some good production out of him. Next up is center Matt Skira. I think that he's pretty low on the list. I would like to have seen him higher on the list because we really need to know what we got in him for real, for real. Like, it, it ain't looking too good, all right? Other than him, it ain't looking too good. So we got him, and then we got we have Dieter. That's it, all right? So we got to find out what we got in either one of these guys. Real talk and very fast, all right? So I ought to put him... In my top five, really. All right. But he comes in at number seven. All right. We know where he came from. He was with Baltimore. He was injured. Uh, he had that infamous forgot to snap or forgot to snap the ball play. Okay. So, yeah, we got to find out what we got in him. Maybe he turns out to be something. Maybe not. And we'll just see. Okay. We'll just see. Sign him, if I'm not mistaken, to a one year deal. All right. One year deal worth 1.7. Okay. 1.7. We'll see what happens with him. All right, so he comes in at number seven. Number six, not bad. I would have put him a little higher on the list. Safety, Javon Holland, okay? So we already know we drafted him in the second round. He's supposed to be the guy that is playing deep center and can also cover in the slot, cover tight ends, and play in the box a little bit. He's a big corner, so he's not, he's not one of those small guys like Bobby McCain. But he, ha he has range, all right? He's speedy, he's got quick twitch, he has some range, so it's going to be good to see what he can do. Apparently, he did pretty well when he was out there in minicamp, so let's see if he can progress on that with pads on because pads, that's a whole different ball game, all right? These offensive lines start slinging you a little bit, you know what I'm saying? They're able to touch you now, all right? So let's see if he can get off blocks clean and get to the, uh, and clog up the running lanes and also on top of that, not be fooled by Tua with eye discipline, all right? That's going to be another big thing. We don't want to see, see – and, and that's the thing about – let me talk about that real quick. Let me just mention that. That's the thing about training camp, right? Training camp is one of those weird things where you're looking at the, the overall of, of, the camp, of camp that day, the observations. You're looking at the observations, and you're seeing a pick by Holland, but Tua threw it. So it's like, great pick, Sucks two or through it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, and that's why I'm happy that we have two teams that we're going up against in practice because we don't have to see our guys go against each other. All right, where we have a sweet and sour or a sweet, uh, sweet and bitter moments. All right, or bittersweet moments. I should have just said that, right? Bittersweet moments. I don't edit, so that's staying in. 
we, we, we don't have these bittersweet moments. So we'll be able to dot up the defense, Chicago um, and the Falcons. We'll be able to dot them up. And on the other end, we'll be able to get picks and sack the quarterback on, on other teams and not have to worry about that going against our own team. Now, hopefully we don't suck against both those teams in practice. That would be horrible. Uh, hopefully we're balling out. But we don't have to have friendly fire, okay? That's enough of that. Let's move on. Number five, Jalen Waddle. Jalen Waddle would have been higher on my list as well. So I'm, I'm, I'd like to see who's number one, number two, number three for real. All right, so we already know first pick of this year's draft, speedy guy. There was talk about maybe he still has injury issues, but if you've seen these videos that he's putting out on Twitter and Instagram or whatever, the man is healed, okay? The man is Completely healed. You don't cut on ankles like that if, you, if your ankle ain't fully healed. All right. So maybe he just got a pimp lip. I don't know. All right. I, I, I don't know who I ain't judging. All right. So I'm, I'm glad to see that he's on the list. But five, and I mean, he would have been on the list anyway. But five is a little low for me. I would have had him in the top three for sure because I want to see what he can do with Tua when the balls, uh, when the bullets are live. That's what I want to see. I want to see. You got a full defense coming at you with pads on. Of course, they can't touch the quarterback, but they can get darn near close to. How does Tua respond? How does Waddle respond to press? How does Waddle respond to just playing, all right, with pads on, with a helmet on, going full speed? How does he respond? That's what I want to see, and I'm hoping that we hear good things in training camp about that. I'd like to see him a little higher, but we'll see who's ahead of him to know why he put him at five, okay, because that's kind of low. Number four. Jalen Phillips, all right? So we go from Jalen to Jalen. Spelled differently also, by the way. Uh, they are spelled I'm not going to go through all that, but they are spelled differently. But it is Jalen Waddle and Jalen Phillips. Jalen Phillips is at number four, outside linebacker. From what I hear, the man's a Swiss Army knife. Like, the man, can play, he can edge rush. He can play middle linebacker if you need him to. And he could just step back in, cover, um, in coverage on the outside. The man is a freak of nature. Uh, absolute um, workout warrior as well. Um, reminds you a little bit of Cameron Wake with his physique. Like, the man is jacked. Can't wait to see what he can do with pads on. Once again, when there ain't no pads on, offensive linemen can't really do nothing with you. Now, when you got them pads on, now we get to find out if he's a real physical specimen like Cameron Wake or not. Because Cameron Wake, was, he was throwing guys. Straight throwing them. So let's find out about this guy. And let's find out how fast he is with pads on as well. Because he was looking pretty quick. He was diagnosing things without pads and without a helmet. So let's find out when he has these pads and a helmet on, is he still diagnosing fast? Is he moving quickly from side to side, sideline to sideline? That's what we want to see with him. He's at number four. I would have put him probably in the top four as well. So that's a good spot for him. At number three, we have linebacker. Now see linebacker, Bernard McKinney. I would have had him a little lower on the list. I don't really need to see too much of him because I know what he can bring to the table. Now, we don't want no bust uh, from free agency now. We, we don't want that. We want him to, you know, produce and do his part. But I believe he will, so I would have had him lower on the list. That's a guy, he could have been a little lower on the list for me, but this is not my list. Omar Kelly did the work, so we're going to appreciate him for it. Bernard McKinney, we already know, former pro bowler, had a great years with the Texans. He's a run-stuffing guy. He's a bigger back. I don't know about guarding guys down the field, run backers out of the backfield. We'll leave that up to Baker, and we'll leave that up to Phillips. Him, he's your downhill, come to the court. I'm coming after the quarterback and clogging up run lanes. Linebacker with a lot of boom. All right, with a lot of boom. He's a hard hitting guy. So we got that guy, and he'll be the quarterback of the defense diagnosing things, making sure we get into the right coverages, making sure we're getting to the right pressures, things like that. We'll see what he's able to do, how he's able to take command of the defense, especially it'll be a new defense for him for the most part. I mean, they did run a similar defense, but it's not the exact same defense. All right, and I mean, that's one of the reasons why they brought him in because he knows somewhat of what they're running. Okay, so it is good to see him on the list, but I would have had him like eight or nine, like honestly. Number two, and I like this one, all right? He would have been a little lower on my list, but I like it anyway. Liam, all right, Eichenberg. Liam Eichenberg, I would love to see as well. All right, we drafted him in the second round, second 
our second pick of the second round, all right? We moved up some spots to get him. He's going to be on the right side, hopefully. And that's Tua's blind side, okay? So we have Austin Jackson on one end. We have him on the other end. Bookends, all right? We should be doing well when it comes to that stuff. Hopefully, Phillips or Agba are eating his lunch every day. Hopefully, they win some and he wins some because that's what we need to see, all right? Matter of fact, I would love... For because I know Ogba's gonna bring it during game day. So if Ogba's getting stalemated by this dude, then I would love that because I know Ogba is decent. Okay, it's not like he's a scrub. Now Phillips, Phillips gotta win some. All right, Phillips gotta win some because we, we ain't seen nothing from him yet. He gotta win some. But if Eigenberg's doing his job, I'm gonna love it. I like to see him on the list as well because he deserves to be on this list. He just a little high for me. All right, he 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 a little high. I'd have had him a little lower. Because there's some other guys like Waddle. I'd love to see Waddle before I would love to see what, what Eichenberg is going to do. Although we do need pass, I mean, not pay, yeah, pass protection really bad and run blocking. So it's very important. But Waddle is that, he's that new car you want to drive, man. All right. And number one, which I do agree with, would be receiver Will Fuller. We have not yet really got a chance to see what Will Fuller can do because he participated in the last... OTA practice, if I'm not mistaken, that last one. All right, now he did a few things in that last practice. If I'm not mistaken, it was either the last one or the last two, but I think he showed up for a mandatory minicamp. It's pretty much what I need to say. I want to see what this man can do with us, all right? Now, we know he's been good with the Texans, but he also had Deshaun Watson. He had Deshaun Watson, okay? Um, now, he was there before Deshaun Watson got there, but... He had Deshaun Watson, and Deshaun Watson would throw it up to this man. All right, and the man, he's a route-running technician. He's a speedster. I can't wait to see what our offense can do with Will Fuller. He would be top on my list. All right, he would be at number one. I would have Waddle at number two, and then we could go down from there. All right, probably Phillips at number three. All right, and then we can go down from there. But definitely Will Fuller at number one. I'm in agreement with because we need to really see what he can do. He might be able to catapult himself as the number one wide receiver on the team. Parker two, Waddle three or four with Preston. Um, and we'll see how that goes. I mean, you never know. If, I know this is about newcomers, but it almost feels as if Albert Wilson is a newcomer because he didn't play last year. That guy has a chance to make this team for real, for real. Uh, I know Lynn Bowden does too. They type, of, they kind of play the same type of position, so that's gonna help out. Jakeem Grant, I don't know where he's gonna fit into this. Um, now, I will say this before I close, um, and I sound like I'm preaching. I will say this before I close. All right, but anyway, uh, before I close this thing out, I will say this: F Flores, all right, Coach Flo, mentioned that. They might keep seven. Now, he, he was just saying it. Like, he didn't say we're planning on keeping seven wide receivers, but he said, you know, uh, we have a deep wide receivers, blah, blah, blah. You know, we keep six or seven. All right, so he threw seven out there. So there's a chance they might keep seven wide receivers. All right, now, why would they keep seven wide receivers? It's because, one, that team is deep. Two, you got a couple special teams guys on there. Jakeem Grant and Holland, okay? Holland. Matt Collins is a special team. He's a gunner. He plays on all the special teams. He's very important to the team. If, if nobody else steps up to the plate to be able to do that, then they might have to keep him, which is why they would keep seven, okay? But it's going to be very tough to keep Jakeem on the team if all these other guys are balling out. You still have Allen Hurst to worry about. I mean, like, we're, we're completely loaded at wide receiver. We can go any way with it as long as Waddle... Fuller and Devontae Parker make the squad. Now, if Devontae Parker just falls off the cliff, it's just going to hurt, all right? If he, if he don't make the squad because he just ain't cutting it, that's going to hurt a little bit. Preston Williams, he might not make the squad, okay? He just, and, if, and, and that's probably because he can't stay healthy. And it, he just hasn't been healthy. That's the problem, all right? But Devont, Devontae, Fuller, Waddle, the rest, it's a toss-up. To me, it's a toss-up. Now, if you feel a little different, put it in the comments below. I'll holler at y'all in the next one. Y'all already know what it is. Fins up till we die. Please like, comment, subscribe. In about a couple weeks, we're going to be right back at it, ready for the football season. Love y'all. Holler at y'all in the next one.